What's up, fellow YouTubers? It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Shut up, Rebecca Black. Good for you. You know your days of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's your boy, King Cobra JFS, back at you with another video response video. So one of my fans sent me a uh, video of this chick. And I watched a couple of her videos, and uh, yeah, we're going to review a couple of her videos. We're going to be nice. We're not going to be mean. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, yes. Tracking my order. Let's see. I ordered a uh, potion time glass. And I'm um, waiting to see when it'll get here from the old Teespring. It'll get here when it gets here. Okay, yes. Okay, so I... I subscribed to her channel and uh, hard talk about the nice guy. Dude, I went off on my stream yesterday like twice. The first one was a Terrence Pop video response. A little wild, but not nothing too crazy. But that, that Sydney Watson video and the way our society is going, it had me pissed, bro. So let's just get into it. This is a YouTuber by the name of Caitlin V. Are you stuck being the nice guy? Because if you are the nice guy, you're probably constantly wondering why you find yourself stuck in the friend zone. Why? I'm so sick and tired of this crap. Women demand that men treat them with respect, but then you chase after the fucking asshole. Like, and then you'll bitch and whine and moan because you can't find the nice guy. Every chick does this crap. They'll date assholes until the asshole treats her like shit and they break up. And then she'll sit there and whine and moan and groan about how she can't find the nice guy to date. <laughs> so it's Friday. And look what Cobra's got. A Bud Light Lime. Oh, shit. So let's hear from a female's perspective on why the nice guys are bad. Once again, once again, women saying the exact fucking opposite of what they want. And then bitch because their life sucks. <sighs> Ladies, you'd find you'd be a lot happier in life if you were just honest with your communication. Instead of being like, oh, hey, mind games. I'm going to say the exact opposite of what the fuck I want and make him guess. And then, your guy, and then you're going to wonder why your guy doesn't want to talk to you because, look, guys hate that shit. Straightforward, no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want. That's what guys want with our girlfriends. We don't want to deal with head games, bullshit, drama. You know what I'm saying? Your bitchy-ass fucking female friend going, I don't think he's good enough for you because she's jealous she don't have a man and, and her friend does, like. So why is it a hard talk about the whole nice guy thing? This ought to be rich. Boy yourself a cobra's lime and let's get into it. Yeah. So I guess the whole nice guys finish last bullshit. I've talked about it on my channel before and it's frustrating. Yeah, all right. Hi, other guys are getting what they want. Hey, look, it's Friday, Tubes. Well, you are floundering. Here's the problem. Nice guys don't get what they want. Bullshit. The only reason that exists is because society has groomed women to want assholes. And it's the truth because it just plays out that whole female stereotype of men are assholes. 
Speaking of which, I see a fly on the wall. No, we're already loaded. Yes. If you want to get rid of flies in your house, might I suggest either the Undertaker fly swatter with a 28 inch extension, or if that's not heavy duty enough, the bug assault gun. You pour your salts directly into the container, you fill it up, close it up. Doesn't matter if it's unsafe or not, you can still pump it, and when you pump it, the sights come out. Pretty sweet little device, not a sponsor. And if you want to smell good for the ladies, check out tacticalsoap.com. It's the Grondike Soap Company website. It's sick. Link description box below. Coupon code King Cobra for fifteen percent off your order. Now back to the video. They constantly wonder what they're doing wrong, and they feel okay, ladies. I want to, let me ask you this: Why do you do this crap? You want to have a hard talk about some real shit? Okay, why do you do this crap? Why do you say the exact opposite of what you want? Because in theory, a lot of women will sit there and say, but I want the bad person. Yeah, ladies, you say you want the bad boy until you find out he's a big tool piece of shit. Ladies, you want this bad boy that you can just change to your own perfect version of your own perfect guy. Guess what? It doesn't exist. First of all, ladies, why are you dating that guy if you're trying to change him? Like his little corks, like, oh, the way he chews his food or the clothes he wears. You don't like his style. It's like, okay, if, if you don't like his style or the way he chews his food or any little thing like that, why are you with him? You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be nice to have a dating partner where you're just like, no complaints? They're easy on the eyes. They're easy to talk to. You have a lot in common. You, you, you just, you click. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want. Powerless. They allow their relationships. Or because, and this is where the whole nice guys finish last bullshit comes into play. If you're a nice person, generally speaking, people will take advantage of you. And I'm sorry, but this is not healthy behavior for the dating scene. And when about enough women have encountered the anti-nice, the not-so-nice guys, now all of a sudden every man's to blame. She's a lonely cat lady with box wine and four kids who don't appreciate her and a man who, and a baby daddy for each one. And all of them were the bad boy asshole. I'm telling you right now, ladies... You're gonna be a lot happier with the nice guy than the bad than the uh, asshole. Nice guys can be bad boys too. It's just how they present it. Okay. Like you could be a nice guy without. You could be a nice guy and a bad boy without being an asshole. You know what I'm saying? You could be a generally a good person, but you don't take shit from no one or nothing. You feel me on this, YouTube? The lack thereof to run their life, and worst of all, they exude victim energy. And that's why... It's Just speak... Oh, my fucking God. I am so tired of the whole victimhood bullshit mentality in our society. They reek victimhood. Okay, if you're seeing a nice guy as a victim, that's a problem. Even though I just got done saying that sometimes nice people get taken advantage of, that's not always the case. If you're a nice person and you genuinely surround yourself with other like-minded individuals, you know what I'm saying? Then you're probably not going to get taken advantage of. It's the, the thought that, oh, you're the nice guy, you're a victim, you're a little simp. It's just like, shut the fuck up. And then you want to fucking whine because you can't find a nice guy. Guess what happens? And these aren't the bad boys. Let's just call them what they are, assholes. Okay, ladies, when you try to date the asshole, it never fucking works. I have seen it firsthand with female friends of my own. Okay, it's bullshit. In this video, we're going to go over why the term nice guy is super misleading and why being the nice guy isn't so nice 
after all. Okay, you got me curious. I'm Caitlin B, and today we're going to talk about what a nice guy actually is, how to get over your nice guy persona in dating so that you can command space in all of your relationships, in your work, in your family, with your friends, in the boardroom, and in the bedroom. We're going to talk about how to achieve the respect and positive relationships that you want that are good for everyone involved. I am a sex and relationship coach, and for years, I have been helping men to have... Of course, I haven't had pussy in fucking three years. Why the fuck am I watching this crap? Just to have a laugh. Like, <laughs> you wish you had a smoking hot of age goth chick. Born female, then it finds his female. It'll happen. Just got to keep being patient and just keep doing my thing, you know. Good things take time. I find being patient is a lot better than being a thirsty ass motherfucker. It's a breath of fresh air for a lot of women when they see a guy who wants it, but he can wait patiently. It's not all up in your grill like, what up, girl? How you doing? Man. The kind of sex and the type of relationships that they truly want. You can find me here on YouTube where I post a new video every week. And you can find me on Instagram where I post something every day to help you live your best sex life ever. All right, nice guys and soon to be former nice guys, here's the thing. I have a problem with the term nice guy because I hope that you are nice. Like I hope that you are a nice human being. That is basically like the vanilla wafer of cookies. Like it's, it's the lowest standard. Like it's fine. It's Great. Good with banana pudding. Not much special about it. I hope that you are at least meeting the minimum standards of being nice. So let's redefine what's meant by the nice guy. And let's actually call him what he really is, which is a martyr. Because martyrs aren't actually nice guys. Martyrs put themselves into the victim slot. Oh, you're saying pushovers. Okay, so let's call them martyrs. Why we call them the nice guy mentality? See, I, I agree with you on that 1,000%, Caitlin V. Uh, yeah, you know, call them martyrs then. Quit calling them the nice guy just because he's nice and treats women with respect. And then he's told, oh, guess what? Hey, you're not going to get laid being a nice guy. But then women bitch because all, all men are the same. And I'm like, uh, you bitch because all men are the same, yet you expect us all to be assholes. Nice guys are actually victims who are manipulating from the bottom. Let me explain. The average nice guy is being nice in exchange for something. He's being nice because he wants ass. He wants a relationship. He wants... That is so fucking cliche. And I hate the fact that there are guys out there who do this crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're being the nice guy because you want to slam that pussy. How about being a nice guy because it's the right thing to do? And being a decent motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Like... And this is the kind of crap that makes women go, oh, okay. So then the next asshole to hand her a rose and a pretty compliment is going to be like, uh-huh. Unless, of course, that chick finds you physically attractive upon first glance, then, hey, you got it made in the shade, bruh. To prove that this woman is actually being a fool for not falling for him, even though he, she's already made it clear that she's not interested. <laughs> At the end of the day, the nice guy is actually a welcome mat or a human whipping device that is ready to snap at any minute because he's so exhausted from being so nice that he is going to snap and totally lose it. That's not necessarily the case, but at the same time, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Like if you're, you're used to being pushed over and pushed around, I tend to find that people who are the nicest get fucked with the hardest and it's pretty fucked up. You know, we want the world to be a nicer place with people who actually give a shit and treat each other with dignity and respect. But that's something you earn, not something you get.
Now, uh, Caitlin V is, she has a husband, of course, but for the record, she is kind of cute. Uh, what color? Do they like blue, blue, green, kind of silvery eyes? She's got some crazy colored eyes, man. Those things just, they pop. Beside the point. <sighs> the nice guy doesn't have any wants or his own desires. He exists. To please others. Yeah, people like that suck. You can't please everyone. And if you try to please everyone, you're going to be freaking miserable, YouTube. He only exists because of other people. He's like the worst kind of people pleaser. And if this. Yeah, people pleasers suck because you can't please everyone. And you're just going to exhaust yourself trying to. You should only work on, like, trying to make the people happy who actually give a fuck about you. I mean, that's just the truth. Like, if you got friends and family and fans, whatever, people who actually give a fuck about you, those are the people you want to hang out with and make happy, okay? You want to, you know what I'm saying? Be a people pleaser towards the people who matter in your life, not the fucking assholes who treat you like shit and just use you for your kindness. actually sounds like you. I have good news because you do not have to stay a martyr. You can actually become an evolved man, the kind man. The evolution of the nice guy has got to be the kind man. Because, look, we definitely want you to be kind. Women want you to be kind. We want you to be Yeah, of course they want. That's no-brainer fucking YouTube. No-brainer at all. Like, Of course women want you to be nice to them. So then act like it. Quit chasing after assholes. You ever think the reason why men become assholes to women is because they've encountered a couple of, of uh, cute uterus nagging tits? <laughs> I generally do not like referring to women in such a degrading manner, but when it's rightfully earned, it's rightfully earned. Like that one Anna bitch we talked about in my last Sydney Watson video response. Holy shit. This chick was forcing her son to dress up like a girl, like some Silence of the Lambs type shit. And I'm just like, no. Be kind without manipulation. We want you to be kind without... Be kind without manipulation? Yeah, but women are just as manipulative as men, sweetheart. And they're good at it, too, because they throw the whole, the whole hey, if you want some pussy in, in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, dude. Yeah, women are good at weaponizing sex because it works. It's like a dog jumping for a toy or a treat. Goddamn fly. Nickiness. We want you to actually be. And when you weaponize sex, you take the joy and fun out of it, YouTube. In my personal opinion, sex should be something that you and your consenting partner do to grow closer together. Spiritually, mentally, physically. You know what I'm saying? It should be a reward, a treat, a perk. When you weaponize the perks of your relationship, you make it stressful and toxic. Because at the end of the day, both of you want to get your shit sucked. So, say. Now, if you're in a marriage and you're an older couple, but dude can't get his dick hard. And just because your dick don't work doesn't mean your tongue doesn't. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You just got to find ways to be more creative with it. You know, foreplay, suck each other off. A lot of guys think as soon as their dick stops working, their sex life is over. If their heart can't take Viagra and they're just sitting there like, eh. no, dude, just because that happens doesn't mean your sex life is completely fucked. You can still suck your wife's pussy and she can turn and suck your dick off and there you go. All right. Be a kind adult man. And what nice guys are doing is not con Yeah, be kind without asking for anything in return and be kind without being a pushover. 
I agree. Just it's not productive and it's not good for women. So let's talk about how to stop being the nice guy. Well, the first thing you've got to do is acknowledge what you've been doing and how. Yeah, you got to stand up for yourself at the end of the day. You just got to be like, you know what? No, I'm tired of being pushed around. And you know what? You can stand up for yourself without being a dick. And you ever see those situations where it's like the pushover stands up for themselves and people are just like, what the fuck's your problem? You're the problem, asshole. Well, you have been benefiting from it because you would not have been playing the martyr for so long if these behaviors had not been done. Yeah, don't don't feel sorry for yourself and be a martyr. Nobody likes that shit. Benefiting you in some way. Sometimes the benefits are that you actually don't have to take responsibility. You can please people. You never have to stand up for yourself. You never have to actually declare your own wants or desires or intentions. Maybe it's that you never have to try. Therefore, you can never fail. Or you can stay well inside of your comfort zone. And women don't get mad at welcome mats. So you get... Of course women don't get mad at pushovers because they get exactly what they want without being, you know what I'm saying? They can just be like, oh, hey, buy me things. And he thinks to himself, well, if I buy her this purse, maybe she'll let me squeeze her boobies. <laughs> maybe we'll get some of that pussy. Maybe she'll suck my dick. So like a pushover, he just buys it. He spends all his money. And all she's got to do is be like, gold digger status. You know what I'm saying, YouTube? In fact, gold diggers are just as bad as the men who use women for sex. I'll drink to that. Cheers, folks. It validation from women just by being the nice guy. Okay, so we're clear on what the benefits are and how... First of all, you shouldn't live for validation for anyone but yourself. You know what I'm saying? Second of all, yeah, if you're respectful to women, you smell nice, you look you look sharp. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just it's just that simple. And you're not afraid to be yourself. But women dig that shit. Goddamn flying. This one time I was getting my dick sucked and there were a lot of dudes who were pissed about it. Like, how come that goth wizard freak is getting more attention from the lady than we are? And it's because I'm not afraid to be myself and chicks dig that shit. How you may be benefiting from having played this role. Let's talk about what the downsides of being the nice guy are. Number one, you don't get to be in control of your life. You are always at the mercy of other people. Yeah, and that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks, YouTube, when you're not in control of your life and everyone else controls it. You're, you know what I'm saying? You, you become miserable. Yeah. Excuse me. You do things in exchange for other things. So maybe you pick her up from the airport and buy her dinner because you're hoping that you're going to get laid. Well, if you're doing it just to get laid and not out of the actual kindness of your heart, it's a manipulation. You are trying to... Yeah, it is. And to be fair, Caitlin V, women, like I said, are just as manipulative as men. And it's just what it comes down to is I think both women and men need to be a lot nicer towards each other and not let the assholes and the cunts they've dated in the past affect their entire view of the opposite sex. Which, eh, easier said than done, am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Trade something. You are treating sex like a commodity that can be traded in exchange for, like, help moving and borrowing a car for the weekend. This yeah, sex is not a commodity. It's a, it's a want. You want to get laid, and you think to yourself, and that's just courtship 101. Like, don't do nice things for women because you want to get laid. Do nice things for women because you want to show her that, hey, not all men are like that. You're the breath of fresh air she's been looking for. Now, she may encounter a couple of assholes before she realizes, you know what? Maybe I should give that person a chance. Of course, by the time that happens, you could already have a smoking hot of age goth chick of your own 
and the chick you were chasing is going to be like, damn, I should have given Josh a chance. This is why, at the end of the day, it is not nice. It's nothing that it's not good for women. Like, no, it's not, dude. Like, I agree. Women, you need to stop using men for their money and their dick. And men, you need to stop using women for their pussy and their companionship and their money. Like, Jesus Christ is a sea bomb. You can help us move and fix our air conditioning units, and we are very appreciative of that. But when you're trying to get something from us as a result of doing that, you're not really doing us any favors at all. Yeah, you, it, uh, you know what? That's that's fair. You know what I'm saying? That's just the whole thing. If you want to be a nice guy, then do it because you want to be a nice guy, not because you expect something in return. That's a proper good deed, as they say, yes? You do something nice for people because you can, because you expect nothing from it whatsoever. So now that you're aware of the upsides and the downsides of your behavior, let's talk about what you can do. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step to actually stop being the nice guy. Number one, stop trading favors for women's attention. You do not have to win love or affection. You don't have to earn it. You are worthy of love and affection. That sounds all good and fun on paper, but this is part of the whole courtship BS. To some degree, you are competing with a bunch of other dudes for her affection. It's called peacocking. <laughs> yes. Although these days, a lot of women expect men to make the first move because that's just the old-fashioned way to do it. Some, not all. So, of course, you go to buy this hot... You can't just buy one chick a drink at a bar and expect your friends not to say anything because, you know, hey. So you end up having to buy the whole goddamn table a round of drinks just to impress the one chick. And if the one chick you're trying to impress thinks you're hot, oh, it's on, man. You're getting it. You go in there. You're smooth. You're respectful. You got the chapstick of soap on. You're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... If all those chicks think you're unattractive, you're automatically a creep. Without you without you even having to say a goddamn thing or do anything, just buy them a drink. Oh, look, they don't find you attractive? You're a rapist. You're creepy. And attention regardless. So stop doing her laundry. Stop expressing her dog's anal glands. Stop getting her car washed, whatever. Be your own damn person and know that you are worthy of kindness and attention no matter what you do or don't do. That's, That's I disagree with. If you're a piece of shit, psychopathic serial killer, you don't deserve shit but a nice comfy jail cell and possibly the electric chair. Number two, learn how to love yourself. I know it's a little bit trite, but there's a reason that it's said all of Yeah, there's a big difference between being a narcissistic cunt and just having more confidence in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to learn to be happy and, and love yourself and have confidence. The time, treat yourself well. Build up your self-worth and your self-esteem. You will not act as a doormat for another person. When you are taking excellent care of yourself, loving yourself, recognizing that you're worth more than that. Spend time. Yes. When it comes to dating YouTube, know your self-worth. I have a lot of attractive qualities that women desire on the dating scene. Facial hair, a wicked sense of humor, big ass muscles. I play guitar and I sing. All of me loves all of you. Oh, yeah, when I sing that John Legend song, it is pitch perfect. The kind of crap that chicks like to listen to. John Legend, Bruno Mars, James Blunt, et cetera, et cetera. The kind of, or like Adele, which is really hard, but there you go. I was like I could sing down near anything. I could sing down near anything. The Beatles, Elvis, Johnny Cash, Bing Crosby, you know what I'm saying? Spend on things that you're good at, do things that make you feel confident, develop skills, understand that you have value. Number yes, three, like I play guitar, that makes me feel good about myself. Three, ask for what you want and say no to what you don't want. People, this is not rocket science, but my people pleasers, I love you so much. 
And this is where you have the most opportunity to grow. Having boundaries, saying no to things, putting yourself first in a self-honoring, self-caring sort of way, not a selfish way. This means having your own wants. This means having your own desires. This means being motivated for yourself, not for other people or what you can get from them. You see, kind men, like actual good dudes, have desires. They have boundaries. They are happy to say no. They protect their own energy and their relationship. So it's really a good sign when you're someone who can say no. Number four, care less about what women think about you. Ah, yeah, okay, number four, care less about what women think of you. I mean, yeah, to a degree, I get it. It's not just women, it's men, too. You just got to quit giving a fuck what people think about you. Care less about it. But at the same time, you do want to care because fucking, yes, if you're trying to get a relationship out of the deal, maybe some of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to put some care into it, but don't try too hard. Uh, it's so obvious when a dude is going to the bar to pick up pussy, the look on his face, he's determined. But it's so obvious. It's like reading a goddamn book. So you know what you do? You go to the bar to have a good time and socialize. And that's it. You don't go to the bar to get laid. You go to the bar to have a good time and socialize. And, uh... And if I had my guitar with me at the bar, I'd be like, hey, you like guitar players? I'd rock your world. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and guess what? Women do not like it when men manipulate them. Yet another thing that the genders have in common, manipulating each other, it sucks. Stop that. And when you got an itch to play guitar, yeah, shout out to BC Rich Guitars, not a sponsor. But yeah, care less about what women think about you. That's going to help. If you spend too much time giving a fuck about what women think about you, trust and believe you're going to get your heart broken a lot quicker, and it's going to suck. You're going to sit there in this endless loop. Like, why?
One second. Alright, back to the video. Care less. Care less about how women perceive you. Care no, if electric guitar is not your scene. We always got one of these things. A little, uh, little acoustic action, yes. Oop. That's really out of tune. Anyways, <clears throat> put that down for a second. Care less about being wanted, needed, desired, useful. Drop that and care what you think about you. Care that you do what is right by you. Be your own inner guidance of deciding whether or not that something is right or wrong instead of is it going to make me more loved? Is someone going to be happy with me? Yeah, you're never going to be happy just trying to seek everyone's approval, that's for damn sure. <laughs> So you think you can tell heaven from hell? Are they going to like me more? And notice how often that may be showing up in your life because it's likely not just showing up with women. You might be doing that with your boss, with your family, with your mom. Stop caring so much what other people think about you. Care what you think about you. And stop needing approval from every damn girl on the internet. See you in the comments. I love you. You don't need That's uh, that can be said for the ladies too. Stop trying to seek approval from men and just do your thing, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. No, it's the truth. You gotta. What's really gonna help with your uh, dating scene is you find a chick that shares similar interests. So, for example, if I found a chick who is obsessed with Ozzy Osbourne, like I was, you know what I'm saying. Maybe she had a thing for Harry Potter and she had a thing for guys who play guitar. Well, shit. Or maybe she plays guitar for herself.
And that is just the cold fucking truth of life. Like, you think I'm going to be able to hook up with a nice Christian girl? That's a laugh as soon as she sees the pentagram on my ring. Like, let's go show us to piss off her parents. Which brings me to my next point. Only uh, Sincerely, dating people that uh, fucking piss off your parents. Stop that. Trust me on this. Your parents raised you. They know you a lot better than that other person does. Oh, it's a silly thing. I mean, I love you, but I love you anyway. Number five, have integrity. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Don't bullshit. Don't bullshit. Don't bullshit women. Don't bullshit people. Don't bullshit anyone. Don't bullshit yourself. Don't just say what integrity. other people want to hear. Have integrity. Tell it like it is. Say it straight. This is some of the hardest stuff you ever had to do. Is just communicate straight and tell it like it is. I'm good at that. Truly, with other people. And if you do these five things, you are going to be well on your way to stop being the martyr, stop being the quote unquote nice guy, and start evolving into your final form of the kind. Man, the good news is that this is very, very fixable. So if it sounds like you and you are ready to change it and put all of this down and step into your true masculine nature, please apply for coaching. I and my team work all day, every day to help guys like you actually manifest the life and the relationships of their dreams. Both Here's a real talk, YouTube. Why, if you're trying to get a girlfriend... Why the fuck would you take advice from a dude? Because a dude don't understand chicks. I would much rather take dating advice on how to get a girl from an actual girl. You feel me on this, YouTube? Being powerful and leaders at work and being incredible, sexy, talented lovers in the bedroom. <sighs> nice, guys. I'll make one final plea to you. Trust me when I say that some of the things that you are doing, that you think are working, that you think are moving you towards where you are trying to go in this world are actually working against you. You have nothing to lose by trying this on. So take it from me, sex and relationship coach, Caitlin B, test it out for yourself and see how your relationships start to change as a result. Get clear on what the benefits are that you have been getting, but also get clear on what you are losing by being the nice guy. And understand that in order to stop being the nice guy, you're going to have to stop trading favors, caring what other people think about you, and doing only what others ask instead of what you know is right by you. It's hard work, but it is worth doing. I believe in you. And if you want my help, apply for coaching. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And always, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel if you like being amazing. I'm Caitlin B. I'll see you here next week. Bye. Okay. This next one. How to get a woman to think about you nonstop by the same... Lovely YouTuber. Let's see. What are you even recording? Okay. Oh, yeah. I know. I got some thoughts. I'm ready to share. Mofo. The last, the third video we're going to review of hers is 20 things that women find attractive in men. That'll be the last video of hers that I'll respond to at least in this video. These are all some pro tips, I guess, but
And sometimes you just gonna say, fuck relationships and masturbating is easier. <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes you, you, you live in an area where the dating scene sucks. And it's just like, shit. But it's Friday. So we're going to crack it open, man. It could be a, a side effect from watching Terrence pop for a lot longer, but... Whenever I hear a woman bitch about how manipulative guys are, I'm like, that is fucking rich. Women are just as manipulative as men. And men are just as manipulative as women. We weaponize what we have to offer in the relationship. And legit, it doesn't do anyone any favors. It just creates more unnecessary drama and it overcomplicates and stresses out the dating scene. Excuse me. I'm not even putting on the clock. You're getting it raw today. Cool. I'm fired up. I just watched a video. I may or may not link to it below. I haven't made up my mind. It was a video from a Jewish woman. Like, she was talking about how she was dating this man. It was a video from a dating coach for men. And this person was giving advice to men on how to make women think about you nonstop. How to make her, how to make the woman that you want to be thinking about you nonstop. How to get her to think about you nonstop. So this video did pretty well on this person's channel. And that got me to thinking that it must be a subject that men want to know about. And so I clicked on it and I watched it. And I am in great. <laughs> the advice was so bad. It was B-A-B. -B. Okay, so yes. How to get a woman to think about you nonstop. Caitlin V. I guess a guy made this video on how on the same topic, and Caitlin V saw it, and she got all steamed up and her snatch mad about it. Bad, and it made me upset. I don't know if you can tell. This is my upset face. It made me upset because you deserve better than that. We deserve better than that. Men, women, everyone, gender nonconforming folks, every person out there deserves better than the advice that was shared. In summary. The advice that this coach shared was in order to get her to think about you nonstop, you have to play aloof, hard to get, and generally be unavailable, even going so far as to say that you sometimes need to just disappear and not respond to messages or texts, and then randomly get back, and blah, 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 I'll, I'll get into all of it. I'll get into it in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so you're claiming... You're claiming that the crappy advice, eh, playing hard to get, act like you don't give a shit. But in the last, okay, never mind. I was going to say in your last video, you literally said, stop caring about what women think about you so much and just do your thing. But yeah, basically barely replying to her, ignoring her texts. That kind of thing. Eh. To be fair, if guys are trying way too hard to get a chick, it's super obvious. So if you cool it back and act like you don't give a shit if she notices you or not, it's reverse psychology, dude, and it works almost every time. Think about this for a second. Okay. You're at a bar. And you see a smoking hot blonde with some nice double D titties and a fucking mm -hmm. kind of waist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, buddy. 
Every guy in the bar is trying to get down her pants and buy her drinks. And she could be single, and maybe she is, but for this hypothetical, let's say she's single and kind of looking and just kind of playing the field, you know. And this chick's like the hottest chick there. and Every guy's just trying to get down her pants and uh, buying her drinks, flirting with her and shit. She's like, eh, you know what I'm saying? You're the mysterious bad boy in the corner that doesn't try. He's just doing his thing. Nine times out of ten, she will gravitate towards the guy who's not trying versus the guy who tries too hard. It's just a fact of life. It's the truth, you two. Like I said in the last little bit, when a guy's at the bar trying to get laid, it's so obvious. When a guy's at a bar trying to get laid, it's so obvious. So you want to try, but don't try too hard. And at the same time, don't try enough. You want to find that, that healthy balance. That's what it's all about, that healthy balance between the nice guy and the asshole. You, you don't want to be a complete pushover, but at the same time, you don't want to be a complete jack-off jackass either. You know what I'm saying? Jerk, wad, piece of shit. You got to find the balance in between those two. If you're too nice of a person and if you're too goddamn happy, the world will fucking crush you. If you're too negative and you're mean-spirited, nobody want to be around you. That's just how it is. Why would this person make such a video? Why would people like yourself watch a video like this? How to? Because when it comes to the dating scene, people are hopeless. It's just the truth. When it comes to romance, people are hopeless. Everyone's always looking for the, the next big tip, the secrets to attracting, blah, blah. Now, like I said, if you want to attract women, dude, you got to get yourself some of that tactical soap. Now, tactical soap <laughs> is designed to get women in the mood, if you catch my drift. It's designed to give you a boost of confidence on your skin. In fact, I plugged the link in one of Caitlin V's videos, but it got deleted because she probably thought it was spam or a bot account or some shit like that. And I'm just like, no, it's the real deal. Whatever. <sighs> yeah, tactical soap is a pheromone-infused soap, and it works. Now, if a woman is sexually attracted to you and you're wearing the soap, the effect of it will be 10 times worse. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you're just a friend or acquaintance, she'll be like, oh, hey, you smell good. See what I'm saying? Just the way, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's tricky how it works, but it works. I myself wear a bond, number one. Smells amazing. Smell that? Smell like love, doesn't it? Ugh, love is like a fart. It stinks. It's full of assholes. And if you force it, you're going to end up with a lot of shit. Excuse me, I farted. Smell like, smell like Asperger's. Oh, <coughs> I can't believe you just made that. Hey, I have Asperger's. I get to make that joke. Honestly, if I end up going through a, all the way to like my fourth year. Let's see. Fuck, I'm like three months away from entering a four-year dry spell. And quite frankly, I don't care. I would rather laugh than I'm going through a dry spell because I have plenty of attractive qualities that women desire. 
You're the asshole behind me talking shit. Ew, excuse me. Yeah, that's real attractive, ripping ass on camera. No, but seriously. I love animals. I'm great with kids. I play the guitar. I sing. I'm great with old people. And I stand up for what I believe is right. Even though I dislike kids, I'm tolerant and I'm patient enough, you know. Get her to think about you know stuff. Well, I think the answer is because you're thinking about her. You met somebody, you got a crush on her, you want to plant the seed in her mind that the two of you should be together. I get that. In fact, I get that a lot. In fact, I spend a ton of time trying to think about how to capture your attention on YouTube and how to get you to think about me a lot. I'm here to get you to think about me a lot so that you can have a better sex life, though. It's not just because I want you to think about me. <laughs> Are you serious? Hey, cutie. Hey, how are you? Hey, you got a nice hey. Would you like a dump hey. to go with it? Hey, cutie. <laughs> but for me, my core values as a person and as a coach that works one-on-one -on -one with people are pleasure, depth, science, and magic. Magic, you say? Magic. Magic. Magic, you say. Magic, you say. Yes. Those are my core values. And tricking somebody by playing mind games to get them to think about you, to me, not pleasurable, not deep, not based in magic, and not based in science. That line of thinking does not jive with my way of thinking about the world. But it works. And if it didn't work, women and men wouldn't complain about it. Mind manipulation, it works. And when women and men know how to, like, manipulate the opposite sex into doing what they want without even having to lift a finger, it is almost like magic. But uh, <laughs> it's fucked when people do that shit, just saying. World. And so I decided to make my own video explaining to you how to actually make her think about you nonstop without playing stupid mind games. Stupid mind games, huh? You know, because, yeah, chicks totally don't play mind games with dudes. No, not at all. Mmm. <laughs> In fact, women are just as guilty of this as men. So whenever I hear a woman complain about it, even if she's a decent person and who doesn't pull that shit, I instantly think to myself, hypocrisy much? Are you ready? Are you ready? Is you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Eddie. I'm ready. I'm ready. Eddie. Eddie. Oh, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Eddie. I'm ready. Hey, Patrick, are you ready? Oh, yeah, SpongeBob, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Man, freaking sweet SpongeBob voice. And you're grunge, my gears. <laughs> the bullshit on the dating scene. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> no, literally, if you're ready, go down in the comments right now and say, yeah. But I know you with me. How to get her to think about you don't stop. Number one, listen to her when she talks and then later show her that you listen. This is stupid easy, but many men, and to be fair, most women, forget about it and so they fail to do it. One of the Yeah, that just shows you care about the person. That's just common sense, man. But in, in defense of guys everywhere, most guys are not going to listen because as soon as we try to please the woman, sometimes she'll get pissed off and say the exact opposite. I meant this, you asshole. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, you know, and I'm not trying to be a dick, Caitlin V. So hear me out. It's like, 
your woman's having her time of the month. And of course, she's like, hey, babe, could you go to the store and get me some ice cream? I'm having cramps. And mm -hmm. so you're like, sure, babe. You need anything else while I'm at the store? And she goes, yeah, could you get me some pads? Cool. See, here's the thing. If you see a dude in the uh, feminine products area at Walmart, he's either buying tampons and pads for his wife, girlfriend, or his daughter. One of the three, right? <laughs> uh, fuck. And here's the thing of it. Ladies, stop making your men buy your shit like that. Like, you know your body. You know the brands you use. So you do it. Woman up, goddammit. Because you know how awkward it is for men to be standing in the corner going, oh uh, my God, there's so many different brands. Which one do I get? So, of course, you text your girlfriend, hey, babe, uh, there's a lot of pad brands. Which one would you like? Question mark. Kiss emoji. Flower. Send. Mm -hmm. No answer. You're sitting there for fucking 20 minutes. People are just staring at you like, uh-oh, he's probably got... <laughs> That's exactly how it is, too, like, and she, you know what I'm saying? So finally, you just, like, you, you get impatient because she's not responding to you, so you're like, fuck it. You just grab the first one you see. Got a variety pack for light, heavy, and medium flow. There you go. And then you go to the, the fucking frozen section... And you, you get the chocolate ice cream that she wanted, the brownie battered chunk from Ben and Jerry's, just like she likes, right? You take it home, and, uh, yeah, she gets pissed off because she wanted strawberry ice cream instead, and you got the wrong fucking brand of ice. You got the wrong flavor of ice cream. And it's just like, well, why didn't you text me when I was at the store? And, of course, her phone was dead. And she couldn't get a charger to work. And, oh, my God. To be fair, uh, women are emotional creatures by nature. That's just how they were programmed. We'll get into that with the third video. <laughs> yes. I'm not trying to be a dick, but... The things that surprised me the most when I started dating my husband... We were long distance and we would have these conversations that were like four or five hours on Saturdays. And in them, we'd cover a lot of ground. Obviously, it's like four to five hours. And later, I'd see him or he'd call me or he'd text me and he would remember like one little detail about that conversation, something that I said in that conversation, and it would blow my freaking mind. I was it just shows you pay attention and you, and you care what she has to say. That's, that's pretty basic shit. But guys, it's, this is very typical of guys. Your girl will go off on this fucking long story about her best friend and her a the time they went to the bar and got super drunk and then they ended up back at her house and how she had to hold her friend's hair up while she puked and then freaking a bunch of guys started hitting on her and she didn't like it. Just this fucking this whole goddamn story. And you remember, and it's hard because guys – We'll drift off and think about nothing. But we'll sit there and go, doesn't mean we're listening. So you got to work on that, fellas. You'll find that she'll be a lot more receptive to what you're doing. If you pay attention, it just shows you care. And don't just... Don't just do it because you want that pussy. Do it because you're a decent person. Always wondering, how did he do that? How did he listen to me so clearly? He actually heard the words that I was saying and tapped in or remembered something about them. And That's called being a good communicator. And brought that up later in conversation. That would dazzle me and make me think about him because I also wanted to return the favor. I also wanted him to know that I was thinking about him. And then I started listening to everything that he said way more intently because I didn't want to miss anything. I had been pretty casual about listening to him before then. And the thing that got me about this was 
I told him that I was tied for prom queen. Okay, I wasn't tied. I lost by one vote. That's the honest to God's truth. I lost by a single vote. Oh, yes. There were three big events. Actually, two big events. And a woman's... Actually, no, let's go with three. There were three big events in a woman's life that make her feel like a woman. Fellas, her sweet 16, her prom night, and her wedding. Okay? Those are the three things that women, most women, I should say, look forward to. It's a chance for her to be the princess and the queen for a day, that kind of thing. Both. Okay. He remembered that later and then made a comment about it when we were casually on a date a couple weeks later. And it's still tingling in my heart that in that one little thing that I said, because he paid attention, that makes you feel like he actually cares more about you than just getting laid. That's pretty basic. He proved that he heard me, that he listened to me. It made me realize that he was thinking about me on a level that was not just physical and it was not just service level. He was actually listening to me when I spoke. It matters. It really does matter. Number two, to stay on her mind all the time, you must be unpredictable. Predictable. Pattern behavior does not register as anything special. Therefore, if you do the same thing all the time, mm -hmm. after the first couple times, she's going to recognize it as a pattern. Her brain is just going to automatically file it and stuff. Yes, when you add a bit of mysteriousness to your fucking shit, guarantee you. That doesn't change. And it's it'll, it'll get her to notice you. He's unpredictable. Not going to stick out, and therefore you're not going to stay in her mind. So if you want to stay in her mind, you have to do things that shake it up a bit. For example, one time my husband and I were getting out of the elevator at our apartment, and we had a little bit of like a rough, we, we just moved in together, and we had our first sort of like big conflict, and we're getting off the elevator, and he turns to me and goes, it's a race. And then he runs, runs, full tilt, down the hallway and to our apartment. By the time I even realized that we were... That's childish as shit. No offense, Caitlin V, or to your current husband. But it's a race. What are you in grade school? Like, Jesus Christ, act like a goddamn adult. No, I mean, like, in my definition of being spontaneous and mysterious, occasionally you, you cook your girlfriend a nice meal. Occasionally. Her favorite food... You make her a nice bath with pink bath bomb water, candles on the shelf, bath oils in the pink water. Excuse me. And there's some like red rose petals on top of the pink bath water. Or it's all scented, smells all feminine and pretty, you know what I'm saying? Then you make her a clay mask. Get her some cucumbers. You want to make her feel like it's spa day at your guys' deal, yeah? For racing, he was like halfway there. But it doesn't matter because it was so unpredictable. I still remember it to this day. Usually you just get off the elevator and you turn. Yeah, that's, ugh, jeez, I gotta stop farting on camera right now, man. God damn it. Ugh. Yeah, Jesus Christ, dude. It sounds like Asperger's, dude. Like, straight the fuck up. No. Nope. Turn to go to your apartment. But he made that moment extra special and extra exciting. And it taught me something really, really important, which is that unpredictability can happen at... Spontaneous, romantic, in the sense of being unpredictable at the same time. Yeah, that works. Any given time. You can walk into the restaurant and say, I'll take one of every taco on this menu. And it probably costs you 30 bucks, right? But she'll never forget it because it's unpredictable. People don't usually go into the restaurant and ask for every single taco. Yeah, she did that too. Yes, y'all, I am married. You would amazing. I'm very 
Oh, you're married. Good job. Nobody cares. Happy for you, though. Uh, you know, weddings are just funerals with cakes, man. That's horrible. And if you hate being rejected on the dating scene, just remember, you're going to die alone anyways. It doesn't matter if you have somebody or not. Every single day, every God, because I Number three, don't try to be everything to your partner. You can't be. This is an exercise in futility. You both will end up hating yourself. It's yeah, this goes back to being a whole people pleaser bullshit. You cannot be everything to your girlfriend. You cannot be her coach, her guidance counselor, her this, that. You know what I'm saying? Like, ish. You try to be every little thing to her. You can't be confidant, friend, coach, priest. Mom, cousin, uncle, dog, cat, assistant, boss, secretary, biggest fan, toughest critic, football, linebacker. You get my point. You can't be everything to her, and you shouldn't try to be. If you try to be everything to her, she's not going to think about you as any one thing special at all. Don't try to be everything to her, but don't pretend like you don't care about her, which is what that other coach's advice was, and that was what the nonsense BS part of it was. I'm not saying... Yeah, if you pretend like you don't care about her, it depends on the chick. Because sometimes that reverse psychology crap works. But if she thinks to herself, oh, he doesn't give a fuck about me, she's going to move on. It's the truth. Put the Mountain Dew up. Second. Push the curtain or curtain black cushion back in. That you shouldn't be a great partner. You should be totally honest with her and say that you're interested in her, you're attracted to her, you wish to be in a relationship with her. But that doesn't mean you should try to be everything to her all at once. That will make you fail and it will overexert you. And she will not think about you all the time in a positive way, although she might think about you all the time in a negative way. And that's not what we are going for here. Number four, be awesome. Have your own life. Have your own interests. Be good at stuff. Love the things that you do. Be yeah, be awesome. Good I at what you do. Being awesome isn't rocket science, but you think that it was based on how few people actually attain awesomeness. You are awesome. The things that make you awesome, you already kind of know. So continue to pursue that. Yes. Basically, focus on your attractive qualities. As you're pursuing her, and if that's like being great at cooking, continue to be great at cooking. Be awesome, because then she will think about you. You think about people that are awesome way more than you think about people that are not awesome or like neutral, right? It's just it's not rocket science. Like, be awesome, and she'll think about you because she'll think about how awesome you are. Numero cinco, have great boundaries. This goes along with not trying to be everything to her. You should have limitations on how you allow other people to treat you, her and others. For example, I don't have sleepovers on weeknights because I'm really serious about my job. So you can come, we can cuddle, we can have sex, but then you'll have to go home. That's a great boundary. People that don't have boundaries do not. Yeah, it's a great boundary in theory, but men cannot get away with that crap. Look at the, <laughs> yeah, it's the truth, dude. Look at Quagmire from Family Guy. The dude will just fuck the chick and tell him to leave. Chicks are the only ones that can get away with that crap. If men try pulling that shit. Oh, edgy, Cobra, jeez. And no, that's the truth, like... I'm serious. It's the truth. It's the goddamn truth. If a dude has a tight schedule and pulls that crap and then tells her to leave right after it's all said and done, he gets called a pig. 
But if a woman does it, that's because she's got boundaries. Uh, I stick out in anyone's mind except me. for, oh, I bet I could totally take advantage of that person because they don't have good boundaries. Having good boundaries makes you memorable because it lets them know that you value yourself. And when you value yourself, you are something and someone of value, and she picks up on that right away. Name calling is a great example. I don't allow people to call me names. I don't associate with people that call me names. That's a really clear boundary for me. I was hanging out with my husband early on when we were dating, and one of his friends was making fun of people and calling them names. And I said, you know what? I don't do this. I don't hang out with people that do name calling, and I certainly don't allow anyone to call me names. It's not how I want to proceed. And at first, it kind of freaked him out. He was like, oh, shoot, she's not going to hang out with my friends anymore. And then he got it, and he respected me so much more for it. And it didn't mean he didn't hang out with his friends. I didn't. He had good boundaries, too. He was like, well, I'm going to still hang out with that person. And I said, that's cool. I'm not going to. Good. There's no hard feelings. We had a negotiation. We designed our relationship to make space for that. I no longer had to be around this guy who used language that I did not like. And he didn't feel like he was pressured to give up that friendship with that person. He wanted to remain friends with both of us. Holding our grounds and having good boundaries early on in the relationship made us continue to want to be together. And guess what? There are no minds involved. Yeah. Having boundaries in a relationship is good, though. It is. Number six always leave them wanting more. Do not stay until the bitter end, whether that's on a date or at a party. Do not try to ride it out and somehow fall under the mistake that the longer that you stay talking to this person, the better that it Stirring the CBD infused Mountain Dew beer with the wand, using the magical vortex method, optimizing the taste of my beer at the magical molecular level. Good afternoon. We were doing a uh, video response to uh, like three of Caitlin V's videos. She's a female who gives dating advice. So there you go. Yeah, so if you're the last person to leave the party, you somehow won the party. Always leave them wanting more. At a reasonable stop time, go home. Don't try to make the date last until forever unless. Both of you are really, 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 really into it. And even then, I still think that you should call it before you're both exhausted or before you both have to go to work the next day or before you literally are like eyes closing, can't stay awake. Always leave them wanting more. Now, this is not a mind game. This is a strategy for how you interact with other people. And I think there's an important distinction there. I'm not saying you should choose to leave them wanting more as a way of tricking their mind into thinking about you, although it does work that way. I'm saying you should always leave them wanting more because it sets you up for your next date. Like if you burn someone out on you, then they're not gonna wanna see you again so quickly, right? But if you leave them wanting more, leave them with a little bit of mystery, you know, have an amazing time, but then say, hey, I gotta get to work tomorrow morning, I'm gonna call it a night now. When you do that- That's just being responsible, to be honest. Calling in tonight and be like, hey man, I got shit to do tomorrow. I can't be here all night. You know what I'm saying? Kind of thing. That not only are you setting great boundaries, not only are you giving them a little bit of mystery instead of sharing with them the whole enchilada, but you are also setting really great precedent that says, hey, you can have me, but you can't have me until you use me up. And you can't have me all the time, but we can still have a lot of fun and we can still date, interact, enjoy this party without pretending that I'm busy when I'm not. I'm just gonna go home before the bitter end, before we ride it out. I'm, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go home. I love doing this. You will never catch, you will almost never catch me at the tail end of the party because that's, nothing good happens at the tail end of the party. Everybody's like, they have too much to drink and they start having conversations that they didn't mean to have and they start to regret stuff, especially early on in your relationship. Just leave before it gets there. Leave them with a little taste, you know? Be the meal that they didn't finish the whole, you know how like when you have a meal, but you still have like a little bit of hunger, like you can eat a milkshake on the way home, like that feeling where you're like, oh, that meal was so delicious. I wish that I had even more of it. That is the energy that I want you to walk away from all of your dates and your parties and your social media. Yes. 
Ooh, I wish I could have had one more bite. Seven, make sure your last interaction is a good one. So when you leave the party or you leave the date or you leave on a trip or you're not going to see them for another week, make sure that you end on a sweet spot. Human beings tend to remember the last thing that they experienced more than the first. So even on a vacation, you're more likely to remember the last day or the trouble you had getting home from the vacation than the trouble that you had getting there. Make sure that the last interaction that you have with a person is awesome. And if you're going to follow tip number six and always leave them wanting more, then you can choose to leave on a high note. You can say, wow, that was an amazing kiss. It was such a great kiss. I cannot wait to kiss you again the next time that I see you. Guys, got it on. Thanks for everything. Woo! Yes! Number eight, be positive. Unless you want her to remember you and constantly be on her mind for how much you complain, be positive. Help her to even shift her mindset into positive. Okay, yes. If you expect us men to be positive and not complain all the goddamn time, then trust and fucking believe women should be held to the same accountability. Do you think us men give a flying fuck about all the chicks you fucking hate and the consistent bitching and nagging you do about them? Like, oh, my God, Cheryl is such a bitch. Like, she thinks she's all that because she got her hair done. She's such a slut. Like, I don't like her. I'm a sound familiar, ladies. <laughs> so then why the fuck are you trying to hang out with her? That's what kills me about it. You know what I'm saying? Women will try to be friends with the chicks they fucking hate. And I'm just like, why? Just so you can talk trash about what a slut you think she is behind her back? Why the fuck do chicks do this crap? Because you're never going to see a guy do this crap. Right? As a guy, if we don't like other guys, we either beat the shit out of each other or just ignore each other. That's just how it is. And then worse comes to worse, like we beat the fuck out of each other, me and this other guy, whatever. And then we bro it out and have a beer later, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of get it, I guess, but... I think if she starts complaining or being negative about something, try to turn it around and make it more positive. People love being around positive people. There is a huge lack of positivity in the world today, or there's, I should say. Yeah, there. this video she's doing was filmed September 19th to 2019. So it's been a couple of years. And this, yes, there's been a lack of positivity in our world today. I don't mistreat my goddamn fans, dude. Fuck you. I'm working on it right now. There's like like an abundance of false positivity in the world, but there's a lack of like real, genuine positivity. She was not to engage in gossip. She was not to engage in name calling and being negative and complaining. Okay, the restaurant gave away your reservation. Let's use this as an opportunity. Okay, yeah, there are some women who do this crap too. To be fair, what did she just say? She's not to engage in gossip. Choose not to engage in name calling. Gossip and name calling. Yeah, that sounds like some characteristics of females. Not trying to be that guy, but a lot of females do that crap and then tell guys not to do it because it's a turn off. And I'm just like, that's the pot calling the kettle black, sweetheart. Yeah. And being negative and complaining, okay, the restaurant gave away your reservation. Let's use this as an opportunity to explore the neighborhood, to go get cheap tacos. 
The theme of today's video is tacos, by the way. I didn't know that before I started, but it's tacos. Let's go get street meat at the taco stand down the street. Like, let's use this as an opportunity to get to know each other, this neighborhood, or whatever. Like, just turn everything into a positive experience and refuse to engage in negativity. People remember negativity way easier than positivity, but not for the right reasons. And if you are just a delight and a treasure to be around because you're a positive, people will want to be around you more. Fuck that. I'm not saying you have to be a complete dickhead, but a little bit of negativity gives you background, backbone. I almost said background. Man, I cannot get my words right today. Shit. If you're a positive, happy-go-lucky asshole who's just happy all the fucking time, the world will crush your fucking spirit quicker than you can say hell's bells. People want to be around you because they can take advantage of you. It's the truth. But if you're negative all the goddamn time, people are going to look at you like, oh, look, it's Devin the Downer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's dude, no. I've actually, you know, when, when people are always depressed about something, it's just like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get depressed just like anyone else, but who wants to be around that all the fucking time? So I get where she's coming from. Nah, he said coming. Trust me. Number nine, make lasting memories by introducing risk. Think back on all the amazing memories that stick out in your head, the moments where you can remember what taste and smell and sound and everything was like in the uh, moment. Uh, you shit. Me, they all included Excuse some me. amount of risk, whether that was physical risk or mm. emotional risk. Vulnerability, emotional risk, or taking big chances like going skydiving for the first time. Physical risk. You remember those things. If you want to stay on her mind after your date is over, long after you two have parted ways, then you need to make memories that last. Now, to make lasting memories, it helps if you have beautiful scenery. It helps if it's a unique or first-time experience. But most of all, most importantly, if there's no risk, then it's not very rewarding. You're not likely to remember the things that happened when you were safely in your comfort zone. But especially after that sweet spot of like emotional risk has started to fade away, but you want to stay on her mind all the time, then you need to start introducing other risks. That could be like, you know, doing something that feels a little bit dangerous together, like going rock climbing. Or it could just mean doing something that means a little bit higher risk than usual, like going on a hike together. Doing things that move you outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, but... Doing risky things to uh, create memories. Is it worth putting you and your girlfriend's safety in, in, in play? Or your woman or whatever? No, it's not. Like, maybe you two are not into hiking, so you go for a hike. Okay, that, I get that. Goddamn flies. Dude, this bug assault gun is pretty freaking sweet. Bulge your salt, freaking. Yeah. It's kind of fun shooting flies with this thing, I ain't gonna lie. And the flies that fly into my apartment window are like, they know what this thing is now. They, they, they stay the fuck away from me. Piece of shit flies. Anyways. Comfort zone and move her outside of her comfort zone are more likely to be memorable and they will stay in her mind for longer. Yeah, but sometimes taking people out of their comfort zone pisses them off slash scares them. To a degree, it depends on how much you take them out of their comfort zone, man. And then finally, tip number 10, be great in bed. Now, <laughs> yes. 
this. I won't close without saying, but I included it on this list regardless because that other jokes really nice. Yeah, so good. Being great at bed. Sex matters. Being great at sex matters. Learn everything you can. No, it does not, dude. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, no one's going to be born great at sex. Like, yes, it's important to be able to, like, know your partner and their body and what gets them off, etc. But there's already all this goddamn pressure for people to have sex. And now on top of it, on top of it, now you have to be good at it, too. If it's lousy, then you're lousy. It's just like, fuck that. There's like all this pressure, Cobra fam, to go out and get laid. And when you're not getting it, you're a fucking loser. Can't get laid. <laughs> Jeez. On top of that, now, now you got all this fucking pressure to just be like good at it on top of it. And it's like, dude, sincerely, just enjoy it. As long as you two are old enough for each other and it's consensual, just to just enjoy it, you know? Foreplay to build it up. Don't just don't just rush to the big finish. Foreplay, build up to it slowly. You know what I'm saying? Savor your woman like a fine glass of wine. You're not in a rush to get drunk, but you're savoring the flavor of the wine. That's that's what I'm getting at. The metaphor. You dig the metaphors I'm laying down. These flies are about to be terminated. These bugs are about to get assaulted. <laughs> That's horrible. Ah, oh, shit. That's about low on salt. I have to fill that up here in a second. Goddamn flies are not, uh, they're not coming near me now. They're like, I know what that thing is. Oh, God. <laughs> about her body, her anatomy, women's bodies, women's anatomy. <coughs> Watch all the videos on my channel. Purchase my master class on lasting longer in bed. Come when you want. Link the note. Do whatever you got to do to be great at bed. That is how you will stay on her mind because no one stays on your mind better than that guy that used his tongue to make you see God yesterday. You remember that guy. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I am a boss at eating of age pussy, dude. You don't even know. I can suck a mean click, dude. I tell you what, I am boss at eating pussy, dude. You don't even know. Because you have those great sex. I fucking eat pussy like a lesbian, dude. Straight up. Experiences where you go to work the next day and you're like, I literally can't even stop thinking about that last night. That was mind blowing. And you're yes. And you know, this, this this is where I feel sorry for women. It takes them a lot longer and to orgasm sometimes, or it, it takes more more intricacy. Us men, it's not that hard for men to get off. It's all built into one package. All puns not intended. A couple of e done. You know what I'm saying? With chicks, it's like you got to reach in there with your two fingers, a tickler G spot. And then rubber clay at the same time. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? Build up to it, foreplay, massaging, all that good shit. So, like, texting her during the day to say, like, do you remember last night? Because that was mind blowing. And she's like, yeah, I do remember last night. I've been biting my lip all morning in this meeting, just thinking about it. You want to stay in her mind? Be great in the sack. That is number one. How do you become great in the bedroom with the ladies? Don't be afraid to ask her for advice and help and be like, so how can I make this as enjoyable for you as it is for me? It's the truth. No, I'm not throwing up gang signs. Fuck you. B 
guaranteed best way to stay on her mind for a long, long time. <laughs> and I guarantee you, if she's had, well, let's say she's been with like three dudes before you and they were lousy in bed and then she encounters you and you actually make her come and everything. Holy shit. Who do you think she's going to be thinking about after that happens? Uh, yes. She will not be able to stop thinking about you and she's going to be having sexy thoughts about you. Hey, man, she's going to want to send you some naughty pictures. Okay. Right. Yeah, she sends you naughty pictures. Don't, don't sext. Unless you're in a committed relationship, do not sext. If you break up with your ex, I don't care how bad the fight was that led up to the breakup. Don't be a vindictive cunt. Delete all the photos they sent you. Don't post that shit on, on social media, on the internet. Like, no, nah, dude. This. Do not sex unless you are 18 years of age or older and you've been in a committed relationship for at least four months minimum. And don't pressure her or him to do that kind of thing. Like These 10 tips are how you get a woman to think about you nonstop. Don't lie. Don't play mind games. Don't pretend to be busier than you actually are. You don't purposely ignore her text or wait three days to text her back or wait 48 hours and be aloof about making plans with her. Nonsense. You have integrity. You are honest. You do things that are pleasurable, deep, scientifically based, and magical. And it doesn't necessarily work here. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. If it's not pleasurable, do not do it. It should not be pleasurable to lie and be dishonest to people. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'm glad that we cleared all of that up. Please tell me what I missed. I'm sure this is just, I just put these list together literally in like five minutes so what did i miss how do you stay on people's minds what do you do in order to make sure that people remember you and think about you all the time or what tip on here did you think was totally bogus write it all in the comments please and thank you and while you're done there please subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notified every time i watch a youtube video that i think is bogus and i have to make a reaction video to it boom i love you you rock. Go out there and be. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got one more video of hers to review. She's got a ton of videos. So check out Caitlin V on YouTube. I just subscribed to her recently because a fan sent me this video. Pull it up real quick. It's, how did you know? <laughs> she heard us hit record. You know, I know girls who think that the beast was hotter before he magically turned back into a prince. In fact, there's a whole segment of the internet just devoted to women who found beast in beast mode more attractive than a handsome Disney prince. If you don't believe me, stick around and find out. Oh, your cat is so adorable. Girls like such weird things that they probably like things about you that you would never have guessed were attractive. So if you don't consider yourself a handsome prince, keep watching. Hi, I'm Caitlin B, sex and relationship coach, person on YouTube and on Instagram. Make sure that you are following me. Follow her on Instagram at Caitlin Victorious X. I want to look her up on Instagram and give her a follow, I guess. She's on both. And I am obsessed with helping you live your best romantic and sexual life. And, and hold on a second. Hmm. Caitlin V Instagram. Yeah, there we go. 
Now she has a husband, so I'm not gonna try anything. But I'm gonna go ahead and give her a follow. There we go. Just followed her on on the on the old Instagram. And a lot of guys are frustrated because they think that they need to look like Hasselhoff or Johnny Bravo or Batman for a woman to find them attractive. And they are well. And truth be told, this is weird things girls find attractive in guys, like Caitlyn V. Not every woman's the same, just like not every guy's the same. And a lot of guys will think they have to be super ripped because that's just uh, how society treats men. It's very similar in the way they treat women as far as you don't have the perfect body. And it's like not every guy is into big tits and a nice ass. You know what I'm saying? Like feeling like you have to be going to just look not every girl's into a ring. Or look like Liam Hemsworth or have a sexy accent in order to land the date. Look, there are so many weird things about men that drive women wild. And frankly, men have no idea about them. That's why in this video, I am going to share with you 20 weird things that girls find attractive in guys. So now, 20 weird things that girls find attractive in guys. This is not necessarily true of all women, just a good majority or some, I guess. I don't know. As I take off this list, pay attention and note, what are some things about you that women around you are probably already finding attractive? Be sexy beast, you. <laughs> all right, for this video, I gathered all of the women from my team and we discussed all of the wonderful and weird things that we find attractive about men. So I guarantee to you, each and every single one of these, it has been verified by a woman who I know. So, uh one woman verified it through another woman, but just because it's because these two women made this list doesn't necessarily make it true for all women. And can affirm each and every single one of these are true, even the ones that sound wild as all get out. Let's start with number one, scruff and facial hair. Look, having five definitely got that covered. Shaggy ass, let me kill Meister Wolverine sideburns, a goatee, a little clit tickler, and a mustache. And some scruff right here on the cheeks, a little bit underneath here. Yeah, I'm a scraggly bastard. Five o'clock shadow is hot. Having a beard is hot. Women like beards, women like facial hair. It makes you look like a sexy, seasoned sea captain or a horse breaking cowboy or lumberjack and we are here for it and if you can't grow a beard no beard is hot too just know your facial hair the options mm, we love it all right number two having nice forearms my dudes do not be afraid to roll up those nice forearms yeah we got that covered too youtube Oh yeah, definitely got that covered. <clears throat> Flexing like an Instagram model, be like, Urgh. please, because forearms are hot. Forearms on a guy, like thick, veiny, muscular, hairy. Number three, having a spirit of decisiveness. Women don't like waffles unless they're on the kitchen table. We feel safe, and we feel like we have to put in a little bit. Wait, what? You're telling me women don't like waffles unless they're on the kitchen table? If you want waffles, then make some. I'm making waffles. Yeah, Shrek was an annoying movie, but. Best effort when our guy is decisive and confident in making decisions. We want you to guide us, be flexible, but have your. Hear me if you dare. Puss and boots. I do that voice too. YouTube, this is my Puss in Boots voice. Find made up and like what you like. Have no problem communicating it. Be decisive. That is hot as hell of a guy. All right, number four. Yeah, be decisive, but don't be a dick about it. Like, have your opinion and what you like in mind, but don't just sit there and be like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be open to her suggestion too, is what I'm saying. And she'll get into that too. Quirkiness 
please do be quirky. We like quirky. We think it's important that you have a sense of humor. A sense of humor? Well, I got that down, Pat. Yes, I do. Yeah, if you have to get a tetanus shot after driving in your pickup truck, you might be from Wyoming. Take that, you fucking fly. Yes. If your truck has more lift than a uh, boob job, you might be from Wyoming. If you try to go into Walmart drunk off your ass to buy a gun, you might be from Wyoming. Uh. Now after I finish this beer, basically, uh, I'm going to drink some water. Kind of cool it for a second, you know what I'm saying? I don't need to have a shit ton all the time, to be honest. But. If you have more guns than ex-lovers, you might be from Wyoming. A little bit of weirdness lets us know that you are unique. You are your own man. You are not just some cardboard cutout. And quite frankly, it lets us be quirky too, because we're all a little quirky. So your quirkiness gives us permission to be quirky. All right, number five. I gotta take a piss. Beer piss. If you think redneck is a subculture and a pronoun, you might be from Wyoming. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Being handy. I love when a man... Of course, being the handyman is a turn-on for women. Mr. Fix-Everything. Jeez. <sighs> And can screw in a light bulb or hang a picture on the wall. It doesn't need to be a complicated repair of an air conditioning unit. To and that's the thing of it, honey, is women can screw in light bulbs and hang a picture too. But it shows you're not afraid to work with your hands, so that's why women find it to be attractive. Be sexy. Like, watching you hang a picture or rig up a garden hose, like, all of it is kind of hot. Uh, power tools bonus points. Being able to do those things and fix little things around the house and letting us watch you do it. Number six, a dash of bashfulness. 
this lets us know that you are not that like cocky guy who thinks that he is God's gift to women and that you are not walking around acting entitled like women owe you shit. Bashfulness is a touch of humility. It's cute. It lets us know that you don't take yourself too seriously and we love it. Number seven, and this is, this was like unanimously agreed upon by the team. We like little scars and imperfections and stretch marks. Like my husband has a scar here and like three scars here from back in his skateboarding days. And I love that. I love knowing that he had such an extreme sense of adventure that he years before I knew him was like bashing his head into things on the skateboard. Uh, I don't know. There's just something about that. The story that the scar has behind it. It lets us. Well, honestly, if uh, I think the reason why chicks oh, or four minutes and 44 seconds in the video. Uh -huh. But why chicks like those little imperfections is because it makes them feel more secure about their own insecurities, I guess, or their imperfections. Know so that you've done things, you've taken risks, you've lived a full life. You have been through the ringer and now you've survived and you're here with us. Number eight, talent and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't require a whole lot. Like, are you competent? Can you fix a computer, light a campfire, real estate? Can I, can I, can I, I cannot fix a computer, but can I build a campfire? Yes. Can I cook a steak? Oh, fuck yeah. I can cook a mean steak, dude. Have you spent time honing skills that make you proud? Trust me. Yes, I have. My guitar playing would be one of those. When you have a talent and know-how and intelligence, even if it's not something that you think is particularly Intelligence, I guess, isn't that important. It just depends on who you talk to, but it just creates a stimulating conversation. You're not sitting there bored out of your skull like, who is this two-dimensional person? Yeah, you ever walk up to uh, your dumb bimbo girlfriend and go, you want to talk politics? And she goes, what's politics? Is that like some kind of bug? Do they have spray for that? And you're just like, Ugh. which is why I'm saying, like, if you find a chick who's super hot but dumb as a box of rocks, yeah, of course, as a guy, the sex is gonna be fucking amazing. All your guy friends are gonna be super jealous because, dude, she's way the fuck out. And you're like, how the, f dude, your girlfriend is fucking hot. You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. But after a while, you try to have a conversation with her, and, she, and, and it's just, ugh, dude. Yeah. So it helps to have a nice, healthy balance of good looks and good intellect and a personality. You can be super hot and have no personality, and that's just the thing of it. People like that are the worst, dude. special we love to see you shine and to demonstrate what you're capable of a smart capable man is sexy to us and trust a lot of women maybe most support ourselves financially nowadays so we actually don't need a guy that's like a super high powered executive or like the most talented intelligent lawyer at the firm we are looking for someone who loves what they do and is good at it and trust me that is impressive and sexy to us Number nine, women love, love men who display a little bit of emotion. This kind of goes back to- Yeah, number nine's a bitch. Why is that, you ask? Well, because for a lot of women, whenever men display emotion, it's seen as emotional baggage. When women find out that men are just as emotional as women, it scares them shitless. And when men find out that women can be just as tough as men physically, it's a bit, uh, yeah, it's intimidating for, for men sometimes. Showing emotion. It's because, you know why, why women find men showing emotion to be a turn on? Because men are told you're not allowed to be emotional. Quit being a pussy and sucking up, you crybaby faggot. That's how it is for men. Whereas women are emotional creatures by nature and plus they're allowed to show 
their emotions. That's called hypocrisy and double standards at its finest. But at the same time, men are allowed to have sex without being judged too much, whereas women will get judged a lot more quickly for going out there and dating and getting laid and shit. So it kind of plays out evenly for both sides in different different situations. Yeah, that, like women don't love the idea of dating a cardboard cutout of like the perfect man. We actually think that if you don't want a cardboard cutout of the perfect man, then quit trying to fucking change him to be the perfect man. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, that's the truth. Like you see a bunch of chicks who they start dating a dude and the second they date him, they have to change everything about him. The way he dresses, the way he looks, the way he carries himself. The and it's like, just accept him for who he is or don't date him. That's simple. Because if men tried this crap with women, you'd never hear the end of it. If a man tried to change a woman the way women try to change men, it wouldn't fly. It would not Marty McFly if you catch my drift. <laughs> Back to the future. Doc, he's okay! Marty. Or I mean, Marty's just... Marty, 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 as soon as the lightning strikes the clock tower, we'll, we'll go back in time. Yeah. That hardly qualifies as a clock tower, but hey, it's still a clock tower. A big band, that's a clock tower. You showing emotions, especially at appropriate times and appropriate displays of emotions? like. Oh, okay, so you're telling me that... Women are turned on when men show appropriate amounts of emotion at the appropriate time. No, because women totally don't get overly emotional for no fucking reason whatsoever. No, not at all. Like, babe, why are you crying? <laughs> I don't know. You know, understanding that women are emotional creatures by nature can help you win arguments against your girlfriend and understand how she thinks. Case in point, when women are arguing with men and they know they're wrong, they will bring up bullshit from past fights plus your insecurities so you fucking flip out. You call her a cunt. And she says, well, I know what I said was mean, but that's no reason to call me a cunt. That's it, mister. You are doing the dishes for two weeks. You're grounded from sex. Uh, and you're sitting there washing the goddamn dishes going, what the fuck? I had this argument. God damn it. So if you want to fight dirty, play her at her own goddamn game. And just stay calm through the whole fucking argument. Step one, you shouldn't be having stupid, petty arguments with your girlfriend. That shit's dumb. Knock it the fuck off. But step two, it's like if she wants to bring up your insecurities to try to win the argument, do the same shit right back to her. You know, like, say so you're, you're afraid of dying alone. But you can't change it, but it is what it is. So your girlfriend might get mad at you in the heat of the moment, like, well, I hope I die first, you die alone. Okay, now she's trying to use your insecurities of dying alone to get you to react. So you know what you say calm as can be? You want me to die alone because let's say her insecurity is she thinks her mom favorites her sister more. There you go. So you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if your girlfriend sits there and says, well, I hope I die first, you die alone. And then, then you say, and I quote, well, if you die before I do, I'll just go out with your sister because clearly she's the favorite, right? And, oh, yeah. And, then she, and that's going to piss her off. Believe me, it's going to fucking piss her off. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm trying to teach you how to win 
at these at these things to beat them at their own fucking game. And you, you got to stay calm because now you opened up Pandora's box. Lilith has come out and she's pissed. You now she's gonna try one of your other, and she's gonna keep digging and digging and digging and all your insecurities <laughs> one after another because now you're playing her bullshit game and then you just keep at it you keep calm you don't flip out you don't call her any fucking names you, you just keep doing what she's doing to you until she's the one that flips out and when she flips out here's the classic line that every female pulls when they piss off their boyfriend we will discuss this when you're a lot more calmer because clearly you can't have a conversation right now. You're too pissed off and angry. And as soon as you say that to her, she's going to try one more jab. Yeah, of course you want to end the conversation because you're not a real man. Don't don't buy into it. Throw in the towel. You've already won the fucking argument. Just walk away with your head held high, fellas. Like, yeah. Uh, God damn it. And you want to talk about manipulative as shit? Instead of arguing your side of the argument, you know you're wrong. Instead of just being like, hey, you know what? I'm wrong this time. Big fucking whoop. Your stubborn female ego is just as bad as any man's ego. You can't just be like, nope. Nobody likes being proven wrong or told you're stupid or anything like that. So I kind of get it. Crying at a funeral, crying at the end of a sad movie. Like, if you can watch Black Beauty and not shed a tear, I don't know that we're meant to be together. Yeah, but for us men, it's a lot harder to show emotion because it's seen as demasculating. You know, like other signs of emotion, getting angry when someone wrongs someone else, like not a fuming, you know, like stormy anger anger but like uh that's wrong what you did and i won't let you do it like hot anger like cuts like a knife it's clean direct like showing emotion and not being super stoic is actually a huge turn on to us i want to see uh little- that depends on the woman there are some women who view men's emotions as emotional baggage but then turn around to man that he automatically support her when she has her time of need it's hypocritical as shit. Gold tear in your eye if your daughter writes you a beautiful birthday card. Like, okay, crying because your daughter wrote you a beautiful birthday card? That's a little too much. Like, you could smile about it and be like, oh, you are just the sweetest. I'm so proud of you. I love you. That kind of thing. And Stop right there. That's it. Crying because your daughter gave you a beautiful birthday card? No. No. Stop that shit. Man up. It's okay to cry during, like, really sad things, but to cry because of something like that. Not trying to sound sexist, but quit acting like a goddamn chick with that shit. You want to cry because you lost a family member or a close friend or a pet? Go for it. You want to cry because some bitch punched you in the fucking balls? Fucking go for it. But crying because your daughter gave you a beautiful card and it just it moved you. Okay, that's your personal choice. For me personally, yeah, I wouldn't. I'm like, thanks for the... Cup, the, the birthday card you gave daddy cupcake i appreciate it that lets me know that you have a heart and yeah that- just because you don't cry a little tear when your daughter g- gives you a birthday card doesn't mean you don't have heart like men i'm sorry but we have a weird way of showing our emotions it's because we're not allowed to show our emotions god damn it it's super attractive all right number 10 Nice hands. Look, clean hands, clean nails, smooth nails are a turn on, especially because... Especially because, yeah, I know what she's going to say already. Because if you want to finger that chick's pussy, do you think she wants to fucking 
let you inside of her, either in her mouth or in her pussy, if your fucking fingernails are long as shit and dirty and gross, no, clip it, trim it, clean it. Life hack. When you see your nail file, you know, you know, do you know what the tip of your nail file is for? It's for cleaning out your nails. That's what this little point is for. Just like that. So after you've trimmed your nails, give them a good swipe roo with the little thing right here. When we see your fingers, we think about them potentially going inside of us, inside of our mouths, inside of our bodies. And smooth, clean, trim nails are way, 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 way more welcome to be. No shit. A woman's vagina is super sensitive. To the point where it doesn't take much for her to get an infection of some sort. So if you got these nasty ass long nails that are sharp, dirty, and disgusting, and you go to finger her with that shit, and if you cut the inside of her vagina with your nasty ass long fingernails, all that dirt and bacteria from your nails goes into that cut, she could get an infection like that. Gross. Okay, don't do that. Be a gentleman. Trim up your nails. Clean it. That's basic shit, YouTube. Put yourself in the woman's shoes. If you had a vagina, would you want someone fingering your pussy with nasty ass fucking... No, you wouldn't, dude. Don't bullshit me. Inside of our bodies, it's safer for us, and it's sexy to know that you take care of your body. Like, look, it is... Yeah, it's, that's just it. Like... Not effeminate or a waste of your time to care about your instruments. These things help you to navigate the world. Yeah, exactly. It's not effeminate. It's just basic hygiene. At one point, your boy King Cobra had some long-ass thumbnails, and they were freaking sweet. But then one broke off, and I was like, oh. And then I had the other one just sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, screw this. And I clipped it, so. World. And showing them a little kindness and respect is hot. Let us know that you're going to show us a little kindness and respect. Yes, that's exactly my point. I actually agree. If you're going to show, if you're going to take time to respect yourself and clean your nails, and little details like that, it shows you can take time to respect her. That makes, yeah, makes sense. All right, number eleven, body hair. Body hair. And body hair. I got that covered. YouTube. Oh yes. chest hair that happy trail there is nothing that screams manly more than your thick coarse body hair wherever it is however much it is you should not be ashamed of your man fuzz women myself included think it is very hot number 12 your voice a nice and smooth speaking voice on a man is sexy now notice i didn't say deep and gravelly or whatever you imagine that a man's voice is supposed to sound like, that's really not it. That everyone's voice is different, and that in itself is attractive. What I'm talking about is like a smooth tone to your voice, a confidence in your voice, a groundedness in your voice. And really what this signals is that you're confident, you take the time that you need to pause and breathe before you speak, you imagine in advance and think about and plan what you're going to say and so it comes out smoothly and if you fashion yourself to be a dominant man a smooth controlled steady voice is one of the most important things that goes into making a scene of dom sub bdsm kiki scene with a woman so if you see yourself yeah don't try that dominatrix bs unless they're into it as a dom Working on having a smooth voice when you give instructions is so fire. Number 13, when a man is willing to take influence from his partner, from his. Yes, this kind of contradicts what she said earlier in the list, but. 
women do think that shit's sexy when you're able to take her opinion into consideration and going with her side of things for a change. It shows you care about her and what she has to say. And you're not just doing it for the pussy. This woman. Not only does this mean that you don't have to have the answers all the time, it means that you're open to suggestions. And even more importantly, it means that you respect us enough to take our suggestions and take our influence. So being available to get better, you know, being available for feedback, loving, compassionate feedback. It can be as simple as, you know, the color blue looks really good on you and you listening and going out of your way to grab a couple extra blue t-shirts because you are letting her in and you're letting her influence you. Maybe that's in the books that you read or even like maybe you decide to drive safer because she noticed that you were a scary driver, which brings me to number 14, which is actually, it is super hot when a guy is a good driver. Now we may have super different definitions of what a good driver is. So I'll just tell you what it is for me. It's someone who makes me feel safe. They pay attention to what's going on in the road. They don't tailgate. They don't cut people off. They don't fly down the freeway. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not hot. If you see yourself as a good driver and you pick up a little speed on the freeway, like, yeah, it wouldn't kill women to be a safe driver too, lady. Like, I'm not saying that that's a complete no, but what I am saying is that road rage, unnecessary risk taking, not paying attention, swerving, just not keeping us safe. Like, I want to know when I'm with my guy that he is thinking about my safety. And one of the ways that Keyword. you can do that, YouTube. Keyword, women want to feel safe when they're around you. Is by driving in a way that lets me know that he is competent and he is thinking ahead about my well-being. So keep it safe out there, you studs. All right, number 15, standing up for what's right. What do you care about? Do you care about justice? Do you care about other people and them being treated well? Do you stop a bully in their tracks when you see someone being mean at a restaurant to the waiter? Do you go up and say something to them? Like standing up for what is right is probably the most attractive quality trait that I can point to in a man, a man who has a moral compass and lives. Yeah, good morals. That's a turn on for women. Oh, well, that's no shit, Sherlock. If I see a woman who's got good morals, I'm more inclined to trust her because yeah. uh, she's a decent person. Buy it and doesn't let anything, even a little bit of like awkwardness at a restaurant, get in the way of him acting with integrity. That is fine. I am here for that. Number 16, nice feet. So women's attract. Wait, nice feet? Action defeat was a little bit of a surprise for me, but it kind of makes sense. You know, the reason that foot fetishes or perhaps one foot fetishes are weird, bro. The reason that foot fetishes are so common is that the brain stores the information for where the feet are right next to the place where it stores the information on the genitals. And so there is some cross pollination between the feet and the genitals. Also, I like to think about both of them are sort of like our root. You know, our legs are sort of the roots that ground us down to the earth and our genitals are at our root chakra. So there's a relationship between our genitals and our feet. And women find nice feet attractive on a guy. So if you have nice... Hey, ladies find nice feet on a guy attractive. Hey, ladies, my eyes are up here. Quit staring at my feet. <laughs> I'm just busting balls. Calm down. Beautiful feet. You might be driving women around you wild, and you may not even know it. Number 17, veins. Yes, veins on your body. Veins on your hands. Veins on your forearms. Veins on your... Things. Number 18. 
being positive and joyful around children. How do you interact with kids? When a woman sees you interacting with children in a friendly, warm, positive way, almost like you allow yourself to experience your childlike joy and you create a beautiful connection and experience with a kid, whether that's your own child or your niece or your nephew or your friend's kid when you bump into each other at the grocery store. How do you interact with children? Whether or not y'all are planning on having kids, whether or not that's even on the table for the two of you, it does not matter. The way that you interact with children in general, let's let's know. Of course, being good with kids is going to turn a woman on. Her motherly instincts kick in and she instantly sees you as a potential life partner and a family starter. A little bit about your personality, how seriously you take yourself, and how much of your own inner child are you able to connect with. Number 19, and guys, I really want you to hear this, dad bod and beer bellies. In fact, I once heard a story from a friend where she said she loved a beer belly because when she was on top riding her guy, the beer belly kept her from moving forward. She would even lift it up and put it on top of her thighs like a seat belt, locking her into place to ride. Dad bods are hot. And also- Yeah, no, they're not. Because I'm a guy, I'm straight for of age women. That's just my opinion. But not every woman is into the whole dad bod thing, to be honest. Not every woman is into the whole six pack abs bullshit. Like I said, women and men are different on what body types they're attracted to. Some women like a dad bod, some women don't. It gives us as women permission to not be like completely perfect. We you don't need permission from the man to not be completely perfect. Holy shit. You got to stop letting men dominate your world to the point where you feel so insecure with the way you look. You need a man who's just as imperfect as you to feel that. Like, nah, dude. Bullshit. Like that you are imperfect. We like your dad bod. We are actually really into your little imperfections and that little extra bit of fat that you have on you. It gives us something to hold on to. It is more for us to love. Dad bods are hot. So please stop shaming yourself for your body. We love it. And finally, number 20, and this one is so personal to me, how you smell and your natural body odor. Now, this didn't... Yeah, how I smell. I smell good. Tactical soap? Yes. Link description box below. Coupon code King Cobra. You know the deal. Appearance of me until I was in my late 20s. I don't think I knew anything about body odor or really cared that much about it. But then, like, a switch. Some of these on the list, like smelling good, men feel the same exact way. Could you imagine, though, if a, <laughs> a man had made a list? called 20 Things Men Find Attractive About Women. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't work like that, would it? No, because there'd be a woman out there going, how dare you, you pig. It flipped in my mind. And suddenly I was like, is that your armpit? Can I smell it? Something changed in me, and I admit, I love the scent of a guy like right after the gym, right after he works out. Now, two days later, it's not so cute anymore, but like a sweaty guy who smells like himself, like the scent of man is such a turn on for me. And I checked, I verified I'm not the only one. Guess what? A lot of us really, really like how you smell after you hit the gym. So maybe you take a little bit extra time between your workout and your shower when you are connecting with the ladies. There's all kinds of science that also backs that up about attraction and pheromones. So take it from me, take it from the women in my life and take it from science. We are into how you stay. Now, how can you tell if you are weirdly attractive to girls? 
Well, when you were listening to me list all of those, did you recognize any of those traits in yourself? A couple, yes, I did. Have you ever been complimented on any of those traits before? Yes. I've been complimented on my biceps and my guitar playing and my singing voice, my sense of humor, my wicked sick facial hair. Even if it was your mom complimenting you, like understand your mom is a woman. She's a real human being. If she thinks that you have nice forearms, damn it, you do. Believe her. Remember and believe people's compliments about you. If you catch yourself hearing a nice thing, someone says something, compliments your arm or your taste or something, and you just shrug it off. If someone at work says, man, you did a really great job on that project, and you go, I could have done better. Stop doing that stuff. Why do you think that your confidence suffers? Maybe it could be because you deflect all of the nice things that people are saying about you. Quit waving off compliments and saying they're just trying to be nice. It's not true. People uh, that is true sometimes, actually. It's called being an ass kiss. It's called buttering you up. Do not just dole out phony, inauthentic compliments. Bullshit. Women do that crap all the fucking time. Especially when they're with their female friends. Oh my God, Cheryl, where'd you get that top? That's so sexy. And she goes off about how she got it on sale at Kohl's or some crap like that. And it's those... Cheryl goes to the bathroom. All of her female friends are like, oh, my God, Cheryl looks like a cheap slut. Have you seen that top? Oh, my God, that shade of green is so hideous. But as soon as Cheryl gets back from the bathroom, oh, hey, Cheryl, kiss, kiss. How are you? Fantastic. And uh, there's just certain circumstances where it's like it doesn't feel like a real compliment. Growing up as a kid, I got told that I'm such a handsome young man, blah, 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 blah. Even though I get rejected by every chick I crush on, I still try to talk to women that are of age. It's just a mindset of you don't care if you get rejected. That's just part of the dating scene. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been rejected by every chick I've crushed on since the fourth grade, and it sucks balls, but what do you do? That's life. A good majority of the chicks who rejected me feel kind of bad now because they're like, well, one, he's autistic, and two, he's a YouTube celebrity. They don't. So you can start accepting those compliments into your life and start using those to build up the case for yourself being the attractive dude that other people know that you are. And finally, play to your strengths. Okay, so you're not super... Yeah, exactly. Figure out what makes you the sexiest version of you and work on and use that. Any weakness, any weaknesses that you have, work on it. For example, I had a nasty temper and uh, it got to the point where it's like, I didn't like having a temper, dude. And do I get mad? Yeah, I still get mad, but I de-escalate a lot quicker. I might be like, man, fuck this shit and fuck that shit and kiss my Asperger's with this shit and then I leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Hey, flies, you want some salt for your french fries? <laughs> okay. This thing is fucking sweet. It was this uh, fly swatter dude, this is a fly undertaker, actually. Yes. For handy. Okay, so you can't grow a beard. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll acknowledge it. I hated my temper. I'd always feel like shit after I lost it. And it's just like, at some point, you got to acknowledge that, hey, this ain't good. Okay, so you're not super quirky or you're not great around kids. That's great. Knowing who you are and playing up the things about you that are attractive is the way to win at this game. Do not focus on the qualities that you don't have. That is a way. Qualities you don't have? Well, it depends on the quality. Like if you're trying to improve upon yourself and make a better version of yourself, Maybe, like in my example, you have a nasty temper, and that tends to make people go, whoa, what the fuck is this guy's deal? 
So like certain qualities that may make you less attractive, you might want to focus on and like work on that while also honing and owning up to the qualities and life that do make you attractive. For example, working on my temper, getting better at guitar, case in point. Waste of your energy and an exercise in futility. Just focus on the things that are attractive to you and own those things. Own your strengths, play up your strengths. And hey, if you're not sure what they are, ask around. Ask your friends what is attractive about you. Ask your friends what are the things about you that women are probably most digging that you might not be aware of. I promise you, you are going to be surprised by what you find. Go into the comments right now and write what you think is most attractive about you. That's like a weird, unexpected thing that makes you attractive. I'm sure that there are so many more than what I was able to get through in this super short list. So get in there, you foxy dad bods, and tell me what's so f***ing sexy about you. In summary, attractiveness in guys does not look like one type of way or one kind of thing or one Hemsworth brother or any Hemsworth brother. It's a matter of knowing what makes you attractive, owning your attractiveness, believing your attractiveness, and letting that attractiveness shine. I'm Caitlin B. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you here next week. Ah! Yes. <laughs> All right, King Cobra fam. Thanks for watching the video response with me. Catch you later.